On my table, I have, without fear of contradiction, the dream of most audiophiles, literally the holy grail among amplifiers. The equipment, on one hand, seems to be just waiting to be purchased, placed on a shelf and connected to any speakers, which, by the way, is a misconception, but more on that later. And it, or rather, he will delight you with stunning sound for decades, introducing the Akiface E280 in all its glory. Brand new, just out of the box, arrived from Japan right on the table. Watch the video until the end. I promise you an interesting story about this model. I will also show its internals, and at the end, we will give a verdict on whether it is worth buying or not. A few words about Akuface. It literally translates to Akyu, meaning accurate and phase accordingly. In Taiwan and Hong Kong, it is also known as the Golden Throat. This equipment earned such a nickname due to its excellent sound quality, which was immediately recognized by the clever Americans and Taiwanese. And this nickname is quite telling. The brand's feature is limited production and very high prices. Moreover, right now you won't be able to buy a new Akiface in Japan at all. They simply won't sell it to you. You need to have somewhat slanted eyes for that, because if you go to a hi-fi store like mine, but a Japanese one, where similar people will be standing dressed in about the same suits, they will ask, where are you from? From Japan? Okay, we'll sell it to you. But if you're a tourist, no. Where are you going? Are you taking your AccuFace with you? No, no. Only for internal use, or for wealthy Americans or Europeans. That's the policy. Is it worth it? In my opinion, no. But that's a different story. Despite this, the price starts from hundreds of thousands of yen and goes up to over a million yen per unit. How much is that in rubles? Please write in the comments, friends. This is such expensive equipment. What a cool, Soft touch coating. How did they do that? All products come with an extended warranty and can be repaired at the factory after their service life has expired. And your favorite broken AccuFace will always be repaired because spare parts are available. Even if the equipment is more than 10 years old, 15 years old, this is the company's policy. I don't see anything unusual in this. Briston actually offers a 20 year warranty on its amplifiers and preamps. Moreover, there are known cases where they repaired equipment for free for clients who were over 30 years old. The same Burmester keeps all data about its products and is ready to repair any defect. But let's agree, this is more of an exception to the rule. Nowadays, most equipment is mass market and such an approach deserves respect. So undoubtedly, the guys at Akifase are doing a great job. By the way, this particular unit was lent to me by my neighbor from the AudioSec. A big hello to Alexei. He always has a lot of vintage equipment so you can confidently reach out to the guys. They deserve respect. I've known them for a long time. All right, I won't keep you waiting. Let's move on to the technical specifications. First, we will take a look at its design, and then we will delve inside to see for ourselves how these Japanese esthetes have arranged everything. And do they have some kind of unclear assembly there? An integrated amplifier weighing over 20 kilograms while operating in class AB at modest outputs of only 90 watts at 8 ohms and 120 at 4 ohms. At the same time, the pride of the engineers is the high damping factor of 500. It's approximately the same as my old Briston 4 BST2. As you can see, under the top cover, there is a very powerful power supply with a massive, likely high efficiency transformer and large capacitors. Is it really so? Just how cool they are? We will find out now. But by appearance, everything does indeed look very, very mature. This golden throat consumes 250 watts, which generally fits within its specifications considering the losses. Perhaps the last remark. All Aquaface amplifiers are capable of driving extremely low impedance speakers. Essentially, they are designed for this purpose, which is why the higher end models specify their power ratings even at one ohm. In this regard, if you have a complex speaker system, even entry-level models like our hero should theoretically be able to drive them. So, I connected this AK to my 802D4 and it struggled, but it did manage to drive them, albeit not completely. Therefore, this is not entirely a marketing ploy. Of course, if you have an E650, I have also sold and set up such devices, so feel free to reach out. They perform well in their class. The E800 also plays in its class, but its specifications are quite modest. However, it can still be challenging. If you have a speaker system of that level or even an 801, you need to connect something else to ensure it drives the speakers properly. Do you think you can just take it and plug it in? No, it is 100 volts, 
so we use a step-down transformer. Although you can open it up and, with certain manipulations, switch it to our native 230. But I do not recommend doing this for an unprepared person, only for a specialist. However, again, I have heard and encountered many times that the dynamics will suffer and that the original 230 will still sound better than a modified 100 for those very 230. Please share your opinion in the comments. I compared the two devices and it seems the difference was not in favor of the Japanese one. Well, that's a completely different story. Let's turn on our step-down transformer. First, we will connect it to the power supply, friends. Let's do it like this. And now we turn it on. And of course, the power button, friends. Just look at this facade. It's truly a golden throat. It's just gold on gold. A dream for any gypsy. The most interesting thing is that Aku does not offer other colors, only gold. So if you're not a fan of this kind of bold champagne color, I don't know, you might have to repaint it. To be honest, I like the color, but then again, it's a matter of personal taste. Let's turn on this button here. So serious, metallic. Pay attention to the hands. They are small, but they look very neat. And the design. Remember, I don't know if you friends have watched my video with the premiere of A3C where there were also arrows. So, I was saying that the logo here is double for the premiere, which is a bit different. Just look at how the Japanese did it. There's simply lights up here when turned on, and there are no additional logos here, here, or here. It's clear to everyone. It turned on, and the Aku turned off, so the logo doesn't light up. What do you think of this idea? That's the essence of it. It's not necessary to place these logos everywhere. Here it looks stylish and noble. Although I don't really like it, let me show you what I mean. Specifically, this indicator is somewhat simplistic. If we adjust where our so-called do you see, here we can see. Meaning we can specifically understand not just by eyeing it as a five or six, but clearly know what volume it is at. This is cool. This is professional. Another thing I want to say, Again, comparing it to our premiere, to our new model that has burst into this hi-fi market and may now also conquer the high end. At the premiere, these arrows are uniformly filled with a single white color and it looks very interesting. Here we have the bulbs. Look, they are here and here and they shine from below. Creating a somewhat uneven color, but it has a very warm, vintage feel. This amplifier with its entire appearance says I am vintage, I am straight from the past, and at the same time, it evokes mixed feelings when you look at it. Furthermore, this is metal, this is metal, this is metal. These buttons also seem to be metal. Everything is done very well. And moreover, you can also plug in headphones here. By the way, the regulator is smooth. It has no clicks, and I don't like that. Although, for example, it also removes smoothly. This switch here, friends. Listen to how really great it works. You hear it, right? Class. And when you switch it, it all takes place with such an incredibly strong pull. It's just really, absolutely cool. You can just take it and switch it like that. On my Briston, for example, which is more expensive than this device, it is not implemented like this. The Japanese are great in this regard. They are hedonists in every sense of the word. And these switches, speaker A, speaker B, what else do we have here? D8, maybe optional. Need to buy additional boards. You can turn off the display. MC, MM, phono preamp. Phases to switch. Tone, compensation that I never recommend turning on. And of course, these cute switches. Bass, treble, and balance. If you have a record, for example, in mono or some cassettes, please play them and enjoy the mono sound. I would also like to draw attention to the thick wall. It stands out like armor piercing and can be used as a shield. One more thing. Remember how Columbo always came back and said, let me ask you one more thing. It's the same here. I kind of want to go back to this amplifier and see what it has. But I want to focus on the interesting features, specifically this soft touch coating, which is really well done. You touch it and feel pleasure. The entire device, all Accu products, invest a lot of budget into these little details. 
Sometimes I feel like they might not fully deliver on the sound, but in terms of appearance, it's just the best of the best. So we turn it off. The facade is clear, it's an entry level model, but it will outperform many in terms of sound and appearance. And what do we have at the back, friends? The back is also quite interesting. First of all, take a look at these terminals for connecting the Accu, how big they are. You can easily place bananas, spatulas, double bananas, banana spatulas, and anything else you want here. We also have two types of terminals available. Again, why is this done? You can connect by amping. The plugs are everywhere. It's really cool. You can always lose them and then not be able to put them back in. We also have balance. You can't go without it. I compared how it plays via RCA and via balance. And it's clear, friends, it's definitely only balance. Because the bass is completely different. The impact is entirely different. And even the volume is somewhat different. But even when you adjust it for RCA, the balance still plays better. Another point is that this device can be upgraded without any issues. You can theoretically insert some kind of phono preamp here. Or, for example, a DAC. All of this will cost an outrageous amount of money, makes absolutely no sense, and it would be easier to just buy a separate phono preamp. Definitely not the QFAS, which will cost an enormous amount. We open it up and see what's inside. Just two screws separate us from the coveted holy grail of entry-level audio files. It turned out to be much more complicated. To open this cover, it was necessary to remove two additional side panels, so not just two screws, but two, six, eight, in general, a lot. Let's take a look. Heavy, well made. Notice how meticulously the Japanese have glued everything very even, beautiful. Here, in order to ensure that it does not get stuck, it is glued once more. Cool. And the insides, everything is as neat as possible. Power, transformer, aku. Is it closed, friends? Most likely it will be, judging by its appearance, shaped like a neck, but I could be wrong. And these two huge cans, practically like Coca-Cola cans called capacitors, for each channel. Let's see what their power is. Naturally, they are branded. It is written. Akufas, pay attention, friends. Something there black at 30. How much is 30? Yes, friends. You see, I think it's 30,000, 20, 30,000 each, so that's 60. Not bad. Very good, actually. The radiators are hidden since the device, by the way, does not heat up. I tested it well on acoustics, practically on any, and it remains relatively cool. Everything is very neat. You can see that cold air should ideally come in from underneath and exit, or above. Very well thought out. There are no moving parts, such as fans, like in some Romanian modern classes, or in these Mich devices, where specific fans are installed in the amplifiers that start to make noise under heavy load. None of this is here. Here is the branded volume control that Akufas takes pride in, which is called AVI, as far as I remember. It is extremely precise and, as they say, made according to feng shui. You know that the Japanese are a nation much less ancient than the Chinese. So it was China that taught Japan literacy. It was China that taught Japan religion in essence. Therefore, when the Japanese practice feng shui, they are essentially repeating their ancestors. Also, look at how well everything is put together. No chaos, everything is maximally well soldered and labeled Acufus Japan. Here it is, friends. This is the coveted inscription. Oh, wait, look, I noticed it's a bit crooked. Just a moment. Do you see how it's made? A little strange. Here they are relatively even, but this part is quite crooked. Well, even the best can have a slip up. In everything else, fundamentally, these terminals are really rugged. The wires are all neatly crimped. Look, nothing is sticking out anywhere. It's well made. And here you see this little board. Pay attention, we will have a screen here. All these arrows. All of this is separated to avoid any interference. Relatively separated. 
Of course, I would like to see some kind of casing here, but again, all of this costs money. What can I quickly say about the sound? I tested it. Thank you, friends, for the audio community. I repeat, feel free to reach out. My neighbor Alexi is a great specialist. I have been with it for more than two weeks, listening to it daily. Is it definitely worth its money? Do they want 500, 1600 for it? Definitely not, friends. If you buy it like my friends or I, for around 300 and some change, then yes, maybe. But again, in this price list, there is a winner that plays in class A, the AD2 Pro. There's a plus that I don't know if you've seen the reviews or not. I will release one soon, and it's really cool. Overall, it outperforms this Aquafus. But if you're buying this device for a small amount of money, it might make sense to get it. But you really have to be a true enthusiast of this sound because it has its own unique charm. It's quite refined, although it can deliver good bass and a solid punch. I believe that the entry-level model should be chosen by people who have a great system with acufas, amplifiers, and a separate preamp. They, for example, want to place it in the bedroom or in the garage or, I don't know, in their gym, in some hall. They want to achieve that sound. Well, yes, if you have one amplifier and you want to invest in it, then probably not. I wouldn't take it because it lacks power, friends. Yes, these up to 100 watts are just not it. Absolutely not it. And it's not Class A. Because when the tone winner starts playing in Class 82 Pro, even at this budget, or lower, you hear that there is a completely different control. The bass is different. It's more powerful. Rock sounds different. Still, this device is more for vocals, more for jazz, and it can't deliver complex music on complicated speakers. For this, we need powerful amplifiers or the E800. So friends, we will compare it soon. Subscribe and stay with us. Bye for now.